Good morning. At the outset, I thank the ASSI and the ICS organizing team for entrusting me with this particular talk on transpedicular approach, which is an universal approach in the thoracic and the thoracolumbar junction. We can approach the anterior column and reconstruct it via the posterior approach and achieve good global fusion. The approach is far lateral where we access the anterior column, lateral to the cord and medial to the important vital structures like the pleura, the lung and the diaphragm. Depending on the extent of the approach, it can be termed as a transpedicular or an extra cavitatory approach wherein in the transpedicular approach, we basically aim at decompression, decomp reconstruction, where we remove the facet on one side, the pedicles on one side. We avoid the anterior cortex and the ribs. Whereas in a more extensile approach, that is the extra cavitatory, along with all these things, we remove the anterior cortex and ribs on one or both the sides, and this is essentially used for deformity correction. In the preoperative planning, the position of the patient is prone on bolsters. And then the sequence is, we expose it posteriorly, put in the pedicle screws. I usually insert a rod on the opposite side to stabilize the column as this involves a high risk of injury to the cord. And then we carry on with the anterior reconstruction. Now coming to our case, this is a patient of a D5, D6 cox with anterior destruction, kyphosis and cord compression resulting in neurological deficit, which needs anterior decompression, reconstruction and global fusion. So in the pre-operative planning, bone resection, the bed of the graft and the reconstruction depends on the, the x-rays and the CT scan, where the extent of decompression is usually assessed on the MRI. I usually approach these cases from the side of maximum compression and maximum destruction. So going to the approach by central midline approach, keeping the midline structures intact, expose the lamina, the facet joints right up to the tip of the transverse process and if required the ribs are also exposed. I usually insert all the pedicle screws before as it reduces the blood loss after decompression and insert a rod on the contralateral side to give stability. Important to demarcate the extent of the posterior lateral window in these cases. So we need to plan all these things on the x-rays and the CT scan prior to the case. So that's the transverse process and the lamina the facet joints on one side which I am demarcating. So we need to get the lamina, the facets, the transverse process and if needed the rib on one side. Now the extent of posterolateral window is the transverse process and the facet joints are excised to expose the underlying structures that is the nerve root, the, the superior nerve root the pedicle and the inferior nerve root. So when you are working on one level, more often than not, just removing one pedicle and tying one nerve root, that is the superior nerve root, which is going just inferior to the pedicle is more often than uh, enough. If you are planning more levels, then probably you might have to uh, plan uh, more root excisions. It is recommended that not more than three roots should be tied in one particular case on one particular side because these roots usually are accompanied with uh, vascular supply to the cord. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I have done a left hemilamectomy to expose the lateral margin of the dura and the cord. So that's the pedicle which has been exposed. The lateral margin of the dura is demarcated. The superior and the inferior nerve root windows are opened up so that uh, I, can, I can isolate these nerve roots and uh, ligate them. So that's the pedicle, that's the cord, the lateral extent of the cord. Uh, so I know where my lateral extent of the cord is and I would not venture uh, medially or retract the cord too far medially. Next step is exposing the rib and excising the lateral wall of the pedicle. Now this is essential because especially in the mid and the upper dorsal spine, the amount of space which is available might not be enough. Hence, it's important to plan or consider excising the head of the rib uh, right up to the angle of the rib so as to create sufficient space for you to insert a tricortical bone graft or a, or a cage inside. Once you've done that, then we can isolate the nerve roots, ligate them at least uh, 
centimeter lateral to the medial margin of the with the dura so as to tie them and use these ties as anchors to lift up the quad posteriorly and this especially helps when you are working around the uh, pll or the or the cuff it also avoids a tear in the axilla especially with vigorous retraction of the nerve root which is very very difficult to uh, suture as i said the rib head can be excised to enlarge the lateral extent of the of the window and it helps in creating an oblique working zone uh, for you to safely insert the tricortical graft or the cage right anterior to the cord in the middle column once that has been done the the nerve root which has been tied can be lifted up with the tie and the epidural cuff can be uh, dissected or the pll can be dissected from the anterior margin of the dura make sure you dissect off this pll or the epidural cuff right up to the opposite side uh, before you actually plan to excise it the rest of the anterior decompression in the form of debulping and debridement is done in the usual fashion that we do in an anterior approach at this particular stage i distract the posterior column to increase the anterior void this also allows me a good decompression and gives a better visualization for the cord after completing the debridement a good bed is prepared for the graft of the cage with good cancellous bone or uh, uh, normal end plates by excising the disc and this is a most important step i prefer a tie cortical graft in cock spine with the dura under vision the anterior column under distraction make sure that the graft or cage is of adequate size we need to remember that the anterior column is under distraction avoid overstepping and gently insert or tap the graft inside to avoid graft related fractures or subsidence the distraction after the graft is uh, stabilized inside is released the anterior dura is checked and the posterior column is then compressed to lock the graft in the middle column so here important step is make sure that the cord is absolutely free there is a sufficient space of around 2 to 4 mm between the graft and the cord and then you can compress the uh, column from the posterior side again making sure that the cord is not kinked uh, last and the most important thing is rod insertion and good posterior bone grafting with nice cancellous bone and this will help in uh, global fusion both the rods are then rechecked tightened and compressed adequately and the decompression is confirmed along with the reconstruct we can have uh, the option of using end, uh, cages especially if we are going end plate to end plate as the end plates are strong in young or middle aged individuals in old patients if i am going from cancellous bone to end plate i usually prefer a tricortical graft as it can sink and has a margin for error so all in all it's a good option the transpedicular approach we can reconstruct at multiple levels it gives a good three column fixation and the most important thing is that the cord is under vision and it gives a good global decompression thank you very much for your attention